the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So parenting is not easy work, and we have so much uh, that we feel as parents we want to uh, instill in our children. We want to make sure that they are uh, good people, that they treat people kindly, that they open doors, uh, that they respect their elders, that they look adults in the eye when they're speaking to them, that they eat with good table manners, um, that they uh, present themselves well. Uh, we want them to, uh, to be social and then to uh, be engaged with their peers. Uh, we want them to uh, do well in school. We uh, want them to maximize all the gifts that God's given them. And so we, um, uh, uh, we tell them how important it is. We ask them if they've done their homework. Uh, we now have apps so that we can check if they've done their homework. Uh, if they're uh, struggling, we get them tutors to make sure uh, that they can uh, uh, leave as many doors open as possible and they can achieve uh, whatever they feel called to achieve. Uh, we encourage them at every turn. Uh, we pursue other interests for them, uh, or at least guide them to, to find out what other passions they might have, uh, whether it be music, and uh, we pay for lessons, and uh, make sure that they practice in between those lessons so we're not paying in vain. Um, if it's uh, art, we make sure that, uh, that, that we encourage that creativity and give them opportunities to celebrate that. Uh, we sign them for tr up for travel sports and we travel all over the uh, greater Virginia and beyond uh, the supporting that and lessons in between and making sure they did what the coach told them to do and practiced in between practices and we do all of this and sometimes uh, we even have way too much enthusiasm for the things that are not as important to us as parents uh, but we try to encourage our children to be all that they can be in so many different ways uh, and man, we try our hardest. And sometimes we probably over-identify and over-parent, uh, uh, but, uh, but we do it uh, with love in our hearts. Uh, and all of that, uh, I think, are a reflection of our love for our children. Even if it's over-exuberantly uh, shown, it is a sign of a, of a love. But uh, at night, when we're in our separate parts of the house, um, when we're lying in bed or our, parent, our kids are in their other beds, you know, we are asking ourselves, were we too hard on them? Um, do they know that all of these things are important, but if they quit every activity, if they came home with the most uh, underwhelming report card, that it would not change the dial of our love one iota? Do they know that they are beloved children of God uh, and they are beloved by us full stop? Do they know that at the core, we want for them to be happy? that we think all of these are instruments that might bring them happy, but really at the very core, what we want more than anything is for them to be healthy and happy and fulfilled. Do they know that? Do they trust that? And we worry and we wonder if in their room, on their side of the house, if they're not thinking to themselves, if I get all A's, my parents will love me more. If I get, knock that uh, uh, ball out of the park, my parents will cheer louder and care for me more. If I do this, if I do that, I will earn my parents' love more and more. And we, gosh, we hope that is not what's going through their head. Those other things are instruments and reflections of love, not agents of love. The love comes first. And I invite you to think about that as you listen to the parable today. I invite you to do two other things as well as you listen to the parable today. I invite you to think of last week's parable, of that woman, uh, uh, that widow who sought justice and wouldn't leave the unjust judge alone, who kept going again and again and again and again until she received justice. And God invites us to that kind of nagging relationship because God wants us invested. God wants us to care, to trust that God can make a difference in our lives, to be in relationship. You know, you don't step into a relationship, an intimate relationship with somebody, and uh, you might step at the very beginning, but you don't end up into a deep and meaningful relationship with somebody, always showing them your curriculum vitae. You end up in a relationship with somebody because they see everything, and they love you through everything. You're 
morning look when you get out of bed uh, to the uh, 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 part where you can, uh, can't figure out what's going to happen next in life, to the accomplishments, all of it. And God wants us to share it. The other story I want you to think about is the story of the prodigal, which I think is so tied to this story. Picture God as that dad rushing out to throw his arms around that wayward son that's returned and then trying to explain that that love wasn't earned by the older brother that stayed, uh, but was always there, that was always as palpable and as real and as present, whether they uh, worked on the farm or whether they squandered it, that that love was not conditional. Take all of that as you read today's parable. In today's parable, a Pharisee comes in and is praying, uh, is praying to God and saying, God, thank goodness I am not like all of these people who have not followed your law. Thank goodness I have made myself lovable. Thank goodness I have done everything I need for you to love me and for you to promise me all the rewards of heaven. Thank you goodness. I didn't really need anything from you, God. I just wanted to let you know how I was doing, uh, checking in, you know, um, uh, and then stepping out unchanged by the experience, assuming all is well. And then the other, the tax collector. And in that uh, day and time, a tax collector has made kind of a deal with the devil. Uh, he makes his livelihood on uh, collecting taxes for Rome, and whatever amount uh, he puts on top of what Rome uh, has demanded uh, is his income. Uh, and by putting anything on top of uh, what's already an unpopular uh, uh, transaction, uh, he loses popularity with his townsfolk, with the people that he grew up with. Uh, but that's the, the price of, uh, of making a, a pretty good income. And so if you're going to charge 1%, why not charge 5, 10, you know? And so he figures out what he can do to make uh, a living for himself, how much uh, he can get. Uh, and, that's the, and that's where he makes his income. But it's also where he's alienated all of the people in his life, most likely. Uh, and that's kind of where he finds himself, at this crossroads of... Um, putting himself outside of any community. And he goes in and he realizes his absolute dependence on something. He doesn't even know what to ask for. All he knows is that he is broken and he needs help. And he goes and he wails before God and he says, I need help. I am lost. I have squandered everything. This isn't the life I wanted. And God, do we pray that our children know and trust the love that we have for him to do the same. To know when they've screwed up royally, that that's when we want them to come the most and say, Mom and Dad, I know I can trust your love. I know it's there for me, and I need you. And that's what God wants so desperately. <clears throat> this isn't a story about being like person B, uh, that would be the same as reversing it from uh, person A. Uh, you know, if the humble person comes in and says, thank goodness, I am incredibly humble. Thank you, Lord, for making me so marvelous at being humble. Uh, I am so glad I am not like those arrogant, you know what, uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for making me exactly the way I was supposed to be, humble uh, as can be. That's not the point. The point is stepping into this building today and the sun came in right as we did this. And maybe we will go out differently. That's, uh, with the hope that God might work something in us, that we might leave here different than when we came in, that we need God, that we got enough of our stuff out of the way uh, that we left room for God to change our hearts, to work in our lives, to be engaged in such a way that we could be transformed. This is a story about a God who desperately wants us to know that the law is how we have the tools to reflect God's love to the world, how we can live out of the love that already exists, but a God that wants us to realize the fullness of that love and that when we come in here, that we would be open to be transformed by the love and grace of God. When we think we've earned it, we don't leave any room for grace. We can't be knocked across the head by a God who is so full of grace. It's his very nature of God. 
We can't be so moved by the kind of love that accepts us in our vulnerability, in our brokenness, in all the places we're ashamed to show other people. That is what God wants. The last two weeks, God has been pulling us in, saying, come deeper. Trust me. I love you. And when you open yourself to that love, you can be transformed. And we can be in relationship, and you can be shaped for the heart of the world to go out and be that kind of love that spills out, that kind of grace uh, that knocks people across the head. But before we can go out and be that, we have to come in and expect to receive it. So I pray that we come in open to the fact that we might walk out different, differently, and that God would work on our hearts. Amen.